Hello everyone and welcome to our Code for Kids course on my first game, learning JavaScript. In this lesson, we are looking at bringing everything together that we have learned in the last four lessons with Taste the Dog. And we're putting them all into this Taste the Dog project. There are a few things that we need to remember before we can dive straight into the project, but this is a really nice sort of recap to ensure that the learners have understood all the different sections of Taste. In the first lesson, we looked at the straightforward commands of put ball, move, and turn left. We then got frustrated with Tess not being able to turn right, and so we created a function. In lesson number three, we got more in depth with our functions, and we introduced a full row function to help us save time, and as we said in the lessons before, to do the work for us. So here, remember, you define the function, and then you will call it under your function instructions. Finally, we had a look at arguments and putting an argument into a function. So here we've got the function change color and then we are commanding the color to be blue. So let's have a look at task one of our Test the Dog project. Task one, create your own pattern for test to make. Hence, do you remember the shortcut for copy and paste? Here we can make our own creative picture for test using the balls that we have. What's quite nice is to maybe do a little flower or Whatever the learners want to do, they can do here. But remember, they have to make it. So a nice hint for them might be to not make it too difficult, um, although they will find that out pretty quickly. So we can use Control-C and Control-V here. Um, those are our shortcuts for copy and paste. And obviously, that becomes nice and easy. So we've got a sunflower. And now, in the task number two, we've got our actual code on the left. And we are going to then, we are now going to command test to code this picture. Before we do that, it might be quite nice. I know that I want test sort of in the middle here. Recognize that we can actually move test to where we want it. You can see here that test the dog X and test the dog Y. So Y is obviously the up and down coordinates. Right now it's on zero. The most it can be is eight. So I'm going to put seven we can see she jumps down. So eight would be off the page. And then we want one, two, three here. And so I've been able to move test to where I want her. Um, so that's a nice tip to have. We can then start putting in our different lines of code. All right, so a couple of things to look at here. Um, I have inserted this function called turn right because I might, might need it, I might not. Um, and then obviously I changed the where Tess was lying. Um, learners don't have to do that, but obviously it saves a lot of um, pre-work. Um, I've already done this, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it in. Um, we'll try and line these up as much as we can. And so there are all my different lines of code. I haven't made it too difficult. Let's have a look. Perfect, so there is my flower. And remember, try and encourage them not to make it too difficult. Obviously I could fill in the flower, but more uh, but we do want to get onto the friend challenge, which is something that's really nice. So see if your friend can make your what you did in task one, no peeking at task number two. So your friend now has to try and, and make that flower as well. Um, something that you can do if you don't want them to peek at task number two is you can actually cut the code, paste it maybe in a Word document or something, um, leave it there and then let your friend uh, swap computers and let your friend do challenge number one. What's really interesting for the learners to see here is that you can do things in different ways and still get um, to the same outcome. So um, a lot of them are really pushed to do things right. And I think here we want to break that boundary. A lot of ways can be right. There isn't only one way. So try and give them the confidence to realize that. All right, let's move on to tests and spots. Remember, here we have arguments um, when we are calling a specific dog. So we now need to say move test or move spot. And if we're doing a change color, we're passing through two arguments. Here we're gonna tell test test to change the color and drop a pink ball. So this one is gonna be a bit more difficult. Um, try and get your learners to do something a little bit easy so it doesn't take too long. Um, but obviously they can control C and control V and create any picture that they like. And then again, they need to create that in task number four, haven't given them any functions from, from last lesson, they can create a function and pass through 
tests or spot. So if it's turn right, here they can make a generalized function like we did in lesson number four. So if we want to do a turn right or a full row, we can turn right with any dog. And then it needs to be turn left any dog. Always the curly brackets, remember that. All right, and that should be good. So that's really helpful for that. But remember, you can go back into your lessons. Um, have a look at that. Copy a whole bit of code if they want to. Um, if they enjoyed what Tess did in lesson number four, they can copy this code. They can copy it for spot two. So that concludes our project on Tess the Dog. We hope your learners really enjoyed this JavaScript lesson, that they learned things of value about calling and defining functions, about passing different commands through, um, and arguments into functions and now that they can do a bit of teamwork and get their friends to create their own picture. All the best for teaching the lesson and enjoy.